The stepping stone between Europe and Africa, the gateway between the East and the West, at once a stronghold, clearing house, and observation post, Sicily has been invaded and fought over by Phoenicians and Greeks, Carthaginians and Romans, Goths and Byzantines, Arabs and Normans, Germans, Spaniards, and French for millennia. It has belonged to all of them and yet has probably been part of none. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea and today ancient mythology is still central to Sicilian culture. Rites and mysteries celebrated in reverence to pre-Christian goddesses such as Isis, Aphrodite, or Venus were recast to celebrate patronesses such as the Black Madonna or Santa Lucia. Eventually, rituals associated with the goddess cults were forced underground, and a form of hysteria, tarantism, was said to result from the venomous bite of the wolf spider. In many cases, it's said that this popular hysteria was little more than a reaction to the increasingly strict social order imposed by the Inquisition. It eventually evolved into a lively dance, the Tarantella. In ancient Egypt, the spider was associated with the goddess Neat, in her aspect as spinner and weaver of destiny. Her cult can be traced back over 8,000 years into pre-dynastic times, also linked to the Babylonian Ishtar, the Greek Arachne, and the Roman goddess Minerva. Tarantella is characterized by a fast, upbeat tempo and is usually accompanied by tambourines. The idea is that the victims were seemingly cured of the poison of the tarantula bite with frenzied dancing which often lasted for many hours into the night. Most modern psychologists believe that the spider is a pretext created to justify this behavior and some anthropologists have speculated that uh, it's a form of bioenergetic therapy where blocked repressed emotional charge is expressed and released and transmuted. While this may indeed be the case, the Tarantella is probably also connected to the dances performed during the Bacchanalia, the celebrations for the god Dionysus, or Bacchus for the Romans. Dionysus was an Olympian god of wine, festivals, and pleasure. Ritual and sacrifice, athletic games, dramatic performances, feasting and orgies were all elements of the ancient festivals. Dionysus is closely associated with Pan. In Greek religion and mythology, Pan is the god of nature and the wild, shepherds and flocks, flute music, and companion of the nymphs. He was depicted as being half-human, while having the legs and horns of a goat. 
Pan hailed from the region in Greece known as Arcadia. They referred to it as the land that existed before the moon and thought of it as the home of the first Greeks. Pan was associated with sex from the very beginning, the patron of what has come to be known as panic sex, sex for the sake of physical satisfaction. Pan was not the god of love, but the god of lust. The ancient Greeks believed that instant gratification and living in the moment was exciting, but it came with a price. The origins of the Pan Pipes can be found in his failed conquest of a nymph named Syrinx. The music of the Syrinx was known to make people dance and lower their inhibitions. It was said that when Pan played his Syrinx, he could drive people mad with its music. The sound of the Syrinx filled people with the lustful nature of Pan and as a result, they often lost control. This is the story of the Greek god Pan, one half goat, the other half man. He had a curly beard and horns on his head, he really was a panic, the Greeks all said. Pan, Pan, Greek god Pan, one half goat, the other half man. Caper through the woods and fields, dancing, singing, and kicking his heels. Protecting the shepherds who guarded the sheep, they prayed to him as they went to sleep. Pan, Pan, Greek god Pan, one half goat, the other half man. A nymph named Syrinx caught his eye. He wanted to play, but she said, not I. Then began a merry chase. She ran like a deer. Twas a very close race. I can't escape him. I can't hide. Someone save me, Syrinx cried. Her sisters came with all due speed. Their magic changed her to a water reed. Pan, Pan, Greek god Pan, one half goat, the other half man. Why did Searing scream and run? All I wanted was to have some fun. Well, Pan, my boy, as my father would say, Tomorrow is another day. Pan, Pan, Greek god Pan, one half goat, the other half man. Pan is a symbol of Saturn, or Kronos and is associated with the energies of creation in the physical world, where we experience the cycles of time. Pan's zodiac sign is that of Capricorn, the goat, an animal that has a lot of sexual potency that has in later times been converted into Satan, which means adversary. Satan, as a force, manifests as all of the animal appetites that we have within, in the body and mind as well. So those defects that we call anger, lust, pride, vanity, laziness, etc. are all considered animal attributes or impulses that we should overcome or subdue. That is, we must conquer the animal aspect in order to transform the animal nature into a divine nature or to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, from a Gnostic interpretation of the myths, we have to conquer Pan, we have to conquer Satan, the mechanical forces of nature represented in that horny adversary, which is not outside somewhere externally, but lives inside every one of us. Which brings us to the moon. In the study of alchemy or in occult mystery schools, the sun is regarded as masculine because it gives off light rays, whereas the moon does not emit any light of its own, but reflects the sun's rays 
and therefore is regarded as a symbol for the divine feminine, a female archetype representing a higher refined state of enlightenment or intuition, a sixth sense. It is through the southern gate of the sun, represented by the goat of Mendes, that Prometheus carried the serpent fire, the path to the lunar goddess of enlightenment. It is the zodiac sign of the goat during the ancient festivities, now most commonly associated with Christmas, the winter solstice, a time of resurrection after a fall since long before the Christian era. In many esoteric interpretations of these ancient myths, the spilled semen is regarded as a great loss of spiritual vitality equated to death, where the mystery is how to manipulate this orgasmic energy rather than expel it. In other words, circulate it up the spine to other chakra or endocrine centers, stimulating them and refining this energy into a creative potential, or described as some as a spiritual bliss that can last for many hours. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent yet educated anthropologist. Thank you for listening and for subscribing if you've done so. Please share my videos if you enjoy them. I rely on word of mouth. Thank you to my subscribers that have donated to Atlantean Gardens, the nonprofit organization that publishes my books available on Amazon.com and makes these educational videos possible. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'll see you next time.